All right, welcome everyone for another episode of Let's Talk Photography. And boy, do we have stuff to talk about this week, as usual. So let's get right into it, shall we? Join me every Thursday on YouTube for another live show of Let's Talk Photography. We cover the latest news, interviews with today's industry leaders, tips, tricks, lighting, cameras, and the business of photography. My weekly live stream is all about crowd participation. You're encouraged to ask questions, talk about the cool camera gear you've got or the camera gear you want to get. Hell, you can just join our open panel discussion during our Q&A portion of the show. The cost of access to Let's Talk Photography is very, very low. For today only, I'm hosting a very low price of free 99 to subscribe and press that bell icon to get notifications of my upcoming live streams. Now let's get back to the show. Yes, welcome. Welcome, everybody. Come on. Yes, we got a lot. We got a lot. Come on. I think I even have, I have some gunshots somewhere around here. Come on. Welcome, everybody, for tuning in for another episode of Let's Talk Photography. Um, I do want to give a quick shout out to uh, Malcolm. I know he's not here with us this evening because he's out there taking care of his family business. And uh, he's just he said he he uh, made sure to smash that like. And I hope everyone who's tuning in now hits that like. It's free. And as my video says, it's still free 99. So go ahead and smash that for me, please. Subscribe and share all that good stuff. At least subscribe, okay? Like and subscribe. Um, with all that said, let's get down to some of this here business. Oh, Telly, thank you very much for tuning in. Appreciate that. Thank you very much. Uh, let me make sure all this. Oh my, here we go. Okay, now I sound better. They readjust my headphone level. Um, let's go here. Of course, if you haven't already, make sure you do. Go ahead and smash all the socials. Follow me there. Uh, I'm on Facebook. I'm on Instagram. I'm on Threads. And I am on TikTok. Not pop locking, but I'm on TikTok. And I am on Twitter. Wag wagging my fist at uh, Photography News and such. So go ahead and check me out there on Twitter as well. I'm on LinkedIn too, but you'll find me under my personal profile but nonetheless that's all of those so go ahead and um if you don't want to leave or at least have a very quick way to get to my socials the links are in the description section so go check them out so go check them out down below um i do want to let you know i have right now okay let me let me get this ready let me get this ready let me get this ready okay um i gotta memorize all these dang pads i have so many pads it's crazy okay so I have so many things planned. The next thing I have planned for all of you, and this is free, I have my photo walk coming up. That's right, in Sunday, June 2nd. That's less than two months away. I'm hosting a free photo meetup slash photo walk slash just come out and hang out and talk talk ish about photography, lenses, complain about news, complain about why I talk about gear, yada, yada, yada. Come on and hang out with us for a couple hours in San Francisco. I am not announcing the date. I mean, not the date, the uh, location for multiple reasons. One is security. Uh, second is, is the fact that um, I want this to be only for those who sign up to my newsletter. Okay. Let me say that again. <laughs> this is a free event to anyone who signs up to my newsletter and can make it. Because that's where you'll be getting all the deets, okay? You'll be getting all the deets for my upcoming photo walk. Just go ahead, head on over to uh, robertsilverphotography.com, and you will see as clear as day, as clear as day, on the upper portion of the screen, the right-hand side of my website, you'll see it says right there, uh, sign up for my newsletter. You click that. And all you got to do is go ahead and sign up right here. First, last email. First, last email. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy right there. All right. And then press subscribe. Okay. You sign up for that. And then 
that will gain get you access to my upcoming photo walk. All right. So hopefully you come on down, come hang out with us. That would be pretty cool. And I'm trying to see how often I should do these things, but this is the first one I really want to do for exclusively for those who are signed up to my newsletter. All right. Uh, looks like we already have a comment. Let me see here. Oh, we got David in the house. Oh, in Canada. Boy, now that would be, I'd have to plan something for that for sure. And maybe I could see if I could get somebody to help sponsor such a photo walk. But it's not out of the question, though. It is not out of the question. So stay tuned, David. I appreciate the great suggestion. And um, talk to me, man. Hey, King Crook's in the house. There we go. Thank you very much for tuning in. I really appreciate the support and the viewers. I really do. Um, let's get back to the biz. So as I said earlier, just head on over to robertsilverphotography.com, click sign up to my newsletter, and I will keep you all posted on my photo walks, and um, that'll get you access to this one right here, okay? So go ahead and sign up. It's free 99 for the newsletter, and it's free 99 to come join me on my photo walk, okay? Um, and all levels of photography are welcome. I don't care if you only have a cell phone. You only shoot video, you only shoot stills, you have a basic DSLR, a film camera, I don't care. If you just want to capture content and talk geeky stuff about lenses and whatever the case may be, or learn a thing or two from fellow photographers, this photo walk will be for you. It's welcome to everybody, okay? Really is. Positive vibes, man. Positive vibes only. <laughs> Um, I did drop two new videos this week. Let's go ahead and check them out. One is my uh, Lumix S5 Mark II and Lumix S5 Mark II X firmware update. I talked about it, gave you my opinion, etc. So anybody in the Lumix uh, realm that may be interested, go ahead and check out that video on my channel right now. And then this one was the one that, whoo, boy, did it cause a shh storm right here it was the hard truth. that's right it's the hard truth about the black magic pixis 6k and i compared it to the lumix s5 mark ii x and boy people were not happy about that they were not happy and uh we're going to talk a little bit about that later on okay if you have to leave early go check out that video it was just posted um yesterday and uh people aren't happy and that's just the way it goes, okay? I don't know what to tell you. That is the way it goes. All right? Sometimes the hard truth hurts. It hurts. But I got to say it, okay? Um, Warren's in the house. Hey, Robert. New channel over. Oh, new to channel over last month. Love your country. Hey, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Very much. Yes, King Cruck. Hot take. Yeah, man. I'm telling you, people are not. Not happy about it. I got some supporters in there, but boo wee. But you know what? It is what it is. It is what it is. Only one man can stand on top of the hill. Okay, you're going to take the heat. Uh, and what do they say? If you can't take the heat, get your out the kitchen. You know what I mean? So um, I'm going to, I have an apron, a chef's hat, and everything. So I'm staying in this kitchen. It is what it is. Um, you can't be too much of a fanboy to the point where you can't critique a system just because you enjoy it or you like it or you respect it. You have to still be able to be honest about where you come from, okay? The, the numbers don't lie. The numbers don't lie, all right? I'll be sharing that in a second. Um, what else is there? Um, today, you know, ironically, because of some of the news we... Oh, before we get to the news, I do. let me do this. Let me do this. Copy and paste. And um, for anybody who wishes to join the, sh uh, the stream, uh, join the panel. I just posted the link. If you want to join the panel, go ahead. You could come on up. Um, if this stupid little icon would get out of my way, I could actually like pin it to the top. Boy, you know, it has the heart and everything. It won't let me like... Okay, I gave myself a heart. <laughs> there we go. Cool. All right, so it should be pinned to the top. If anybody that wants to join 
the live stream. Click that link above, and uh, I'll see you in a second, okay? Uh, who do we have here? We have uh, Ken Kruk. I understood your point. Didn't come across as hating. Thank you. I wasn't trying to hate, and as I said at the beginning of the video, I my intention was not to poo-poo on the Pixis. Actually, I was very excited about it for many reasons. Um, one is the form factor. I think the form factor is really cool. Second was the price. Okay, you, it's a very good price. But, you know, there are options out there that'll give you the same, you know, uh, 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 same uh, results. Uh, we have Rakesh in the house. Good. Hey, good evening. Appreciate you coming on in. It's always good to see the uh, same faces, quite honestly. I'm not going to lie. It's always good. And growing faces, you know? I really appreciate that. Like Warren jumping in here. Really appreciate it. All right. We got a lot of little news going on, but let's do a quick product review, uh, product highlight, shall we? And this is kind of an oldie, but it's a goodie. And I just had to reinforce this because this plays into what I want to talk about later on in the show. All right. So with out further. Oh, Jesus. All right. All right. We are building this ship as we're sailing it. Okay. Uh, let's get to the product highlights, shall we? All right, there you go, my expensive graphics, okay? Until you guys start cash apping some more, that's about as fancy as my graphics are going to be, and that's just the way it is. <laughs> anyway, all right, let's check out the product of this week right here is the... Hold on, camera. Get that puppy on. You can do it. There we go. We have my Lumix S5 Mark II camera right here. That is the product highlight. The reason why I'm bringing out this camera, whoops, bringing out this camera, first is this setup right here landed me an $80,000 gig. I sh you not, okay? I'm letting you know this right now. It landed me an $80,000 gig right now. Okay. I'm going to be making a video about it, talking about how that happened so that hopefully it inspires you and maybe you pick up a lesson or two on how a potential opportunity can be right in front of you and you could take advantage. And all it took was this right here, this mini uh, small rig mini uh, map box. I have a, a, a small rig cage. This is the S5 Mark II. It's not even the S5 Mark II X. Okay? So this doesn't do ProRes raw internal and live streaming capability. Okay? Then I have my little 5-inch monitor right up top, if you can see it. And this monitor right here is only like 140 bucks. It's really cheap. I've had it for psh, at least seven years. No, dang. Seven or eight. I've had it a long time. It's a cheapie. But boy, is it reliable from Andy Cine. Okay? False colors, zebra lines, peak focus, does a bunch of stuff in this little thing. And it draws a lot less energy than, like, from my Hollyland. But I do love that Hollyland, though. But uh, but this one is just such a quick go-to. And if something ever happened, I'm not tripping off of it because of the cost. And then I have the um, my uh, newer... V-mount battery, which you already saw me do a review on this. So go check it out on my channel. There we go. Let me make this a little brighter. There we go. Okay. I love this just because of all the, uh, you have a D-tap. You have D-tap right there. You have 12 volt, 8 volt. You see that right there? Let me see that. Let me see if you can see that. Oh, like, there we go. 12 volt, 8 volt. Plugs, barrel plugs, and then you have USB A and C. Okay, this battery. Uh, when I when I had to do a test project, lasted me all day. This thing was awesome. This thing was awesome. Go check out that review, and it has you know just like small rig, you know tells you how much uh, hours you have left, how much um gas you got in the tank, and as well as how much is being drawn from the battery, depending on which plug is being used. All right, so I have that here with the small, oh, small rig, with the uh, Lumix S5 Mark II. 
And I'm telling you, this is what helped me land. This setup right here helped me land that gig. You not. I'm telling you, it was amazing. Now, I'm, I'm talking about this camera because a lot of people may look at this and be like, you know, it's 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 not a, you know, a Sony or something. Okay. But if you look inside of a lot of cameras at this price point, 17, it's eighteen hundred dollars without a without a kit lens, twenty one hundred with a kit lens. You will not find a camera at that price point at full frame mirrorless that will do the, what this camera does. And if you do find it, you let me know. Okay, six K open gate, twelve bit external, four two two twelve bit external. Yeah, come on now. Name me a camera at $1,800 that's giving you that for video. There is none. Okay? I'm really sorry to tell you. That's why I wanted to talk about this because of a lot of the heat I was getting on my latest video right here. People were like, you know, they, they just didn't like that I was I was sharing the obvious fact. Okay? Which I will in a second. But this right here, this camera right here, eighteen hundred dollars. Obviously, it does vlog, does ten bit, does uh, open gate. As I said, six K. Okay, uh, ten eighty at one twenty, which is the one thing I don't like, but it is what it is. And it does four K at sixty, but you know there's a crop there. But I shot plenty of four K at sixty, and I just got used to it. It is what it is. Okay, but the point is, I could do it. And this camera right here for eighteen hundred bucks helped me to land an eighty thousand dollar gig because of what it can do. And all I needed, everything I needed to do, was easy to get to. The menu system is very easy because of the flip screen. I could go like this and I always have access to my screen while I'm filming to my menu system. Boop, 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 and keep on going. It was a perfect running gun kit. So if anybody's like, oh, I need to get an FX3 or something, you know, four grand, five grand, six grand, I will still put this up against it. I will still put it against it. Well, maybe the S1, S5 Mark II X, <laughs> okay, which is only $2,000 body only. So shout out to this camera. It doesn't get its just dues, which is quite a shame because it's a damn excellent camera. Yes, it's a hybrid, but it can still shoot magnificent video and it ain't shabby on photos either okay awesome for hand holding with its ibis and it gives you 14 and a half stops of dynamic range are you kidding me for for 1800 bucks so anyway i had to go on my little rant because people people were uh really upset with that video and here's here's a here's the thing Let's get right into it, shall we? Uh, wait, hold on, let me check out these some of these comments. Um, Elighton Musings, Musings, uh, hi from India. Love your work, admire your beautiful channel and content. Thank you, I really appreciate it. I really appreciate it. All the way from India, I gotta go to India. The colors, the architecture, I gotta go check it out. And I love the food, so I'm not gonna lie. Okay. I have to go check out India. That would be a great. If I did, if I went to India, do you think it would be awesome to host a photo walk in India? Would it be good? Let me know down below. Let me know. Let me know. Um, Because I'm thinking about that. Uh, I was talking to my girlfriend. We're like, hey, if we travel, I could host photo walks where I go travel. Would it be worth it? Right? So let me know. Let me look over this. Yeah, there we go. That light is just too much. Uh, can you do photography with that Lumix with good autofocus? Hundred percent, hundred percent. That camera is awesome for photography. Okay, yes, it's twenty-four megapixel, fine, but you still get your phase autofocus detect, uh, IBIS, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And I use a ton of Sigma lenses on this camera. Um, this lens right here happens to be a Lumix. 24 to 70 f 2.8 just because when i do video it has this great focus clutch right here look at this 
And so you get great, great manual focus with this bad boy. Okay. So that's why I, I like using this lens. It's very versatile. Obviously, you get a 3x zoom in it from 24 to 70. And it's just it pairs well with the Lumix. But you can get the same. I have a, a Sigma version uh, in my bag as well. So, yes, that's that's why I liked using it for a very long time. Plus, right now I'm using it for my webcam and all the videos you see me on YouTube. I use this camera. So if you see my talking head videos, they're all shot with the Lumix S5 Mark II. And by the way, the links to the S5 Mark II and S5 Mark II X are down below. And you could check it out on Amazon, 1800 bucks. I mean, for a webcam, it's, 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 it's a no brainer. You see, look at my, look at my quality. And it's because of that camera and it's only 1800 bucks and look at the specs. Stop, stop listening to, you know, just looking at great footage. All these cameras nowadays could do great footage. You, you, you put the uh, iPhone 15 in someone's hand that knows what they're doing. They're going to get great footage. It shoots ProRes raw or ProRes, whatever it does. So with all that said, stop it. Stop looking at the test video footage. Look at the specs. Look at the specs. And then look at pound for pound against another camera system that you're considering. And that's why I will, I'm I'm telling you the Lumix S5 Mark II X is the best value. $19.99, body only. You're not going to get that much punch. 6K open gate in, 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 for, 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 two, for two grand. No one's doing it. No one, who? Help me understand. Help me understand. So that's why I want to share that with you. My job is to just provide you with options, how you guys want to do your thing, do your thing. Now, many of you know, I also shoot uh, Nikon. I love Nikon. Matter of fact, uh, on Saturday, I'm shooting with Nikon, right? All my photography. There's no shade. I'm just calling. I'm just saying what it, it is, what it is for two grand that you can't beat that. Okay. All right. Notification gang gang. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Um, and then we have in a club stand up. Yeah, absolutely. Salute to you. Absolutely. hundred percent. And a little bit of salute to me. Why not? Uh, good evening. We're key. See you Saturday. Oh, okay. You guys are already going to hang out. That's awesome. Uh, I could get Lumix attach my F and E F lenses. Hyphy combo. Absolutely. <laughs> Um, I'm, I'm waiting for, I'm trying to see if Pi, a, a buddy of mine would jump in. Cause he, he just recently bought the S5 Mark II, um, I think due to one of my videos and he's absolutely having a blast and he's not like a professional videographer yet, but man, he's just jumping in face first and I'm happy with what he's coming up with. I'm actually very impressed and he's learning along the way. And, um, boy. I'm just saying the value is there. That's what we're talking about. The value. Um, Warren, Warren C says, uh, what brands do you shoot with me personally? Um, like I said, to get this one gig. I shot with this camera video. Why autofocus? I know how the colors are, the color on it. I really love the colors. I could pull from Lumix cameras. The menu system is dumb, easy to use. And it shoots open gate. That open gate is 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 such a big win for me. Because with open gate, you can really utilize the entire sensor, and you can um, re recrop it later on in post without losing quality. You can make high end vertical video footage. Um, your cinematic, cinescope um, ratio footage. You can shoot regular 16 by 9 for YouTube. You can do everything with open gate. It's crazy and shoot once. Okay. Look, so that's why I do that. Now for, for still photography, I, I got my Nikon. I have my Nikon ZF right here. Can't see it. It's all blurry. Love that camera. And Saturday, I think I'm gonna do the Nikon Z8. I have a model shoot. You do the Nikon Z8. I'm gonna be recording content. Stay tuned for that. And um, we're gonna be shooting a fun birthday shoot for her. And um, I got to see what I'm going to test out. I'm going to test something out. I don't know. Okay. Stay tuned. So those are my two brands. So on my channel, I'm going to be talking a lot about those or systems that are like related. Let's say red 
or um, for Panasonic, it would be anybody part of the L mount system. <coughs> Ergo, Black Magic, um, uh, Sigma, stuff like that. I'm just very most I'm most familiar with those brands myself. And we have. Uh, I, I'm curious, how is the weather in Canada? And then we have. Uh, can you get a beginner on uh, Alexa? If you if you get against a pro DP on an iPhone, DP will make better footage. Exactly, exactly, exactly my point. It's not the camera. I'm telling you it's not the camera, okay? Um, here's a lesson I just learned. So right now I'm negotiating and trying to get my hands on a particular feature script that I want to direct and produce, right? I love the story. It's a great story. We're trying to, you know see how much we can do this film for plus i gotta figure out a deal you know to purchase the rights to to make the project and get the script and i was talking to an agency over in um la and she has a lot more hollywood experience dealing with production studios and stuff like that and she was and and she was like i'm you know because she deals with a lot more with distributors and their actors so that their actors are getting paid all this other stuff she's repping that in her talent and she told me off top, look, you know, quality is going to almost already be there with most of the modern cameras, right? Now, the one thing that matters a hell of a lot when people look at footage is sound. So it wasn't even a camera. It was sound. They were like, your sound has to be on point. It has to sound like your video or your film is ready to be streamed on Netflix. It needs to be damn good sound. And that was kind of interesting to me. That was an interesting perspective because here we are talking about camera gears and and f stops and dynamic range and ibis, no ibis, uh, low pass filters and everything else. And then when it comes to the viewer, they just want: does it look good? More than likely, most of the cameras will. Let's be honest. And secondly, does it sound good? Does it sound professional? So here we are talking about still and video, and then we're not even talking about sound, which is one of the most impactful elements of a film. So think about that. Let that sink in right now as we're complaining about cameras and everything else. These cameras, as I just showed you, for nineteen for $1,800 is going to give you all the dynamic range you need. You know, six and a half stops of, 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 of IBIS, okay? Tons of bit bit rate, like I said, 12 bit external to an Atomos. And so that's not the problem. <laughs> Our cameras are not the problem. It's the user and who we think we're making who, who and, and and who's our perspective of who we're making our content for. Again, if I want my film to be on a Netflix, et cetera, da, 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 that was the one thing she said. She didn't look at my stuff and said, Oh, well, you know, you need to do this better, that better. She said, sound, sound, sound. I'm telling you, there are projects that have not made it because the sound quality was not better invested in. So let's just, you know, keep things in perspective when we're looking at our cameras and whether it's good or not. Our dynamic range is great, but if you don't know how to color grade, what, what does it matter? You're going to end up shooting in standard profile or something, something crappy like that. Okay. I'm just telling you. If you don't understand how much you could push out of Cine D footage versus Vlog or ProRes, then it doesn't even matter if the camera could do it or not, right? So, so with all that said, if you do want to have those capabilities, you don't need to spend a million dollars to get it. A lot of brands out there are are going to sell you on one or two features and dismiss all these other important features. One one feature of the uh, of the Pixis camera that I'm very excited about is that it has internal um, false colors. That is pretty cool. I wish I wish all my video cameras had that. Okay, internal false colors would be pretty kick ass. But thankfully, all my monitors have it, so I could just use it like that. So I'm just just ranting a little bit, guys. Sorry about that. Anyway, uh, I shoot Fuji and Nikon. Hey, Fuji's great. I think I almost got an XT5. I almost got an XT5 because I just love the way it looks. And now I have, you know, to satisfy that retro cool look, I have the uh, Nikon Z, uh, ZF. So I'm very happy with that. Uh, David in the uh, back with us saying, Rakesh, it's warming up. Oh, okay. It's warming up there in Canada. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, very cool. 
All right, Dave, have fun. Um, what's your audio solution for Lumix? Great question. So, like many of you out there, my what I I have, you know, hold on. I'm gonna show. I'm gonna show you. So, of course, I had the DJI Lav Mic One, the first, um, the first series, if you will, first version. And then I have, for serious business, commercial work, like Talking Head, etc. I have my um, Shaka mic right here. This is the Rode NTG2. But now, excuse me, they have like an NTG5 now or something, I believe. Okay, it all depends on your budget. At that time, this is like four years ago. This was like only like 150 bucks or something. So I was like, oh yeah, I'll just grab that. But this is much better than, let's say... Um, one of those plug-in shotgun mics, you know, because it's more directional, it's more focused, so you can really isolate your subject, right? So we have we have that, but this requires the XLR, but I have an adapter that hooks on top of the hot shoe of the Lumix, which gives me two XLR jacks, so I can use this either connected onto the rig, which I tend to don't like doing because any vibration, you can hear it. You can hear it when you're moving your rig. So I always have this on a boom mic and then someone just booming it. Or I have a boom mic um, holder, a boom, uh, yeah, and it sits on my C stand and goes right on top. It, it sits on my C stand and it, it is like this, right out of frame, pointing toward the subject. Okay, so I have that. That's th that's that. And then I have the Rode Mic uh, Pro Two. Uh, excuse, excuse me, the Rode Video Pro Mic Plus. Okay, that's all. Say that three times fast. So I have that mic for a great running gun. What's great about it is that it's a little shotgun mic, but it, it's powered through your headphone jack, right? So that I always have continuous uh, power to it. I don't have to charge it or anything. Plus, it's a little shotgun. It's it's that's a great for running and gunning. But that Rode Mic Pro Plus, it's only good if the subject is like within three feet. Then it then you could kind of isolate their their voice better but boy do you capture way more um ambient noise room noise okay so i have every time i, I did a project i would figure out i would reverse engineer myself you got to take accountability if you want to get better i'd reverse engineer but okay that was cool where can i improve oh shoot okay now i want to make their sound i want to make their voice more present okay cool so i hear less uh you can hear here I'm not sure if you noticed, but you can hear the uh, reflections from my ceiling. And I have hardwood floors, so there's a lot of reverb. Okay, how do I isolate the voice without picking up as much room to room noise? Oh, I need to get a mic that just right, that's just straight onto that, and then get it right out of frame, right out of frame, like whoop, right there, right out of frame. See, it's right there, right out of frame. Okay, and then that's what I need to do. And I just started researching how to properly mic and use mics and stuff like that. So I don't have one mic, and you shouldn't either. That should be a video. Maybe I'll write that down. <laughs> okay, you should definitely learn how to mic. Um, but yes, there is an XLR. It's called a um, dang it, what's that XLR? It's an XLR thing. It's like two hundred something bucks, but you could put it on there, and then you have volume controls, and then also you can hook them to XLR um, microphones. It's really cool. All right, so those are the three mics. I hope that helped in any particular way. Uh, if you don't have great sound, then you got nothing. <laughs> exactly. She was telling me that there were some real nice films that were sitting on shelves because they they didn't like the audio. You know, Netflix or a distributor didn't like the audio. So that's what I'm trying to say is like, believe it or not, you could create fantastic content with cameras that are two grand and less easy but boy if you don't understand the basics how to pull the best out of those camera systems and as, as well as knowing the fundamentals at least of sound or getting someone to do it it's that's where you're going to suffer sound lighting and i'm going to say movement of course composition but movement too people don't know when to move and when not to move a lot of time okay 
Um, if you look at great films, it's very intentional because there's a lot of pre-production. You have your storyboarding, shot list, everything else. Everybody's already pre-planning before you show up. How am I going to shoot X scene? And boy, does it make things easier. Um, King Krug, I hope Nikon gives us an XLR audio module for mirrorless like Panasonic and Sony. I'm not vibing with that generic Tascam unit. No, you're absolutely right. I do have a Tascam for external recording. Um, right. Ugh. Boy, you guys got me always digging stuff out of my uh, little chest here. My video production chest, uh, what is it? Carrying case is always right by my, my desk here, so it's easy for me to grab. Um, so... Check this out. So this is my external. I've had this. I got it at Mike's camera. Shout out to Mike's camera. And I got this a long time ago. Okay. It's the Zoom H4N Pro. This thing is a monster. And it's under 200 bucks. Okay. This thing is kick ass. If you don't have one of those, I would get this. I would get this. Okay. This thing is awesome. Two XLR. You can still plug in. Um, here we go. You can still do this if you need to. But I'd, put, I'd use XLR right there. Here, you can record room tone if you need to, you know, room noise. Or if you're outside, capturing that good old natural noise. This thing is amazing. I love it. It's so handy. Okay. It takes two double A's, which it will eat up. So get rechargeable batteries, but you can um, power it through DC power right there. Okay. This is a great external one and it's less than 200 bucks. I'm telling you, it's kick ass. And they have one that's just one that's really good too. And that thing's less than a hundred bucks. So check out Zoom. If you're going to go get an external, I recommend Zoom, but that's just me. Okay. It's never failed. I have a whole little, this is like my little personal sound kit. I, that's right. I had to actually learn sound. Because if you want to make good content, you need good sound. Um, and this is all I have. I have my dead cat for it here. I have a super, if I need to plug into a system, let's say at a wedding, and you need to get clean uh, audio for, straight from the mixer, make sure you have these cables with you. XLR too, if you're shooting weddings. Okay? These All these little things I've learned along the way because I've messed up. <laughs> And I'm like, oh, let me go get that cable for 10 bucks. That $10 saves me, you know, it'll make me more money, you know? So I have this little kit, which used to hold a monitor. And that's my audio recording kit right there. So I'm I'm telling you, I'm I'm preaching, I'm, I'm uh, practicing what I'm preaching. Okay. I keep that over there. Anyway. All right. So I hope that helped in any <laughs> particular way otherwise i just showed showed you my recorder um da, 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 da. yes okay looks like we're caught up on the messages let's go ahead and take a look at some of the good old news let me let me prime this puppy up real quick okay let's go ahead yeah let's let's do this one first because um <clears throat> the elephant in the room shall we all right Let's get to the news. All right, here we are. Okay. I spare no expense with my graphics. All right. Um, real quick, before we go ahead and talk about something, uh, please go make sure you smash that like for me. It really does help out. Uh, hit that share, subscribe, et cetera. Let me know what you think by smashing that like, please. That, that's all I ask. That is it. Um, okay. So this week, as I said earlier, I made uh, or I posted this video about two days ago or yesterday, excuse me. The hard truth. I want to share the hard truth about the uh, Black Magic's Pixis 6K versus the Lumix S5 Mark II X. All right. Now, the reason why I'm revisiting this is because, as I said earlier, look at the specs. Look at the specs. This is a great camera for six for three grand. 
right? It's a really cool camera. If you if you shoot um what was it um yeah is it EF? Uh, I got forgot the other ding lenses it carries, but either way, PL mount and something else. I think it's RF. Um, then for sure this is a nice camera for for for, for three grand. I like a lot of the mounting options it has. The hardware is pretty awesome. I like that. It has uh, built-in Ethernet, SDI out. It has um, USB port. Man, it's got it's got some stuff of USB C in there. Dang, you know, it's definitely got some juice. Look at that. CF Express Type B, two of them. That's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. Like I said, this is, it's got some cool stuff in here. But when we get to the specs, all is revealed. All is revealed. Okay. So, of course, it does black black magic raw internally, and boy, it gives you some nice bit depth, uh, bit rates, right? Gives you some nice bit rates, absolutely. When you're shooting at black magic raw, but if you don't know how to color grade, well, you're going to be not really taking advantage of all that dynamic range. Okay, um, where's the uh, coda? Da, 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 da. Okay, here we go. The Lumix S5 Mark II X does a lot of what all this does. That was my whole point, was just to show you that there's something that's a little bit more financially feasible for some folks, where in which you will not lose in quality. Sensor size is virtually the same. I shared that in the video. Sure, you get up to 36 frames a second versus 30 frames. Trust me, most most of you will not know the difference between 36 and 30, okay? In terms of, you know, your client, for sure, unless they specifically ask for a 36, which is interesting. Um, everything else starts cropping when it gets to uh, the 4K, like the 4K um, 60 and the 1080 um, 120 frames right here. Just like the Lumix. All right? Also does um, all these supports, frame rates, you'll be fine. Get all that. You can shoot. and It does anamorphic support. So does Lumix. All right. Um, touch screen, of course. Bigger touch screen, but at least Lumix has a flip screen. Okay. It does have time code. That's pretty cool. That, that, that's, that's, some people said that just because of that, they like it. That's pretty dope. Okay. So this is very cinematic, video heavy, clearly focused with the hardware. All right. And look, it has one mini XLR built in. So that's pretty, that's pretty cool too. Okay. That, that's actually really awesome. And this is the this is the and then I, I they came out with like a the, the Ursa and the Ursa Mini, twelve K, and then they also dropped the seventeen K, which is a large format cinema camera. That's crazy. Hey, Black Magic isn't playing. I'll give it that. They are not playing. But spec wise, let's see. Let's see if I pulled up. Uh, oh, I didn't pull up the. Uh, okay, let's do this. Lumix S five. 2x specs cool here we are now i'm gonna go to b and h let's go to the tech right here look right here let me see if you guys see it all right cool so right here you can see look same sensor size cinema 4k 4k 60 422 10 bit unlimited recording no stop 6K 30 open gate 420 10 bit video recording and it does 12 bit external by the way it does 12 bit external okay uh phase detection autofocus i couldn't find if it's phase detect on the black magic like i looked everywhere couldn't find it it says autofocus i'm not sure what it is <laughs> all right five axis image stabilization that's like 6.5 stops here, here's the diff big hardware difference. Dual SD card slot. Okay. Uh, this this app actually is really good. So 
that I know their app. Their app actually is functional. It works really, really good. Wait a minute. We have a uh, we have a friendly intruder to the show. We got Pi in the house. Come on now. Let's welcome Pi to the house. Hey, Robert. How are you? I'm doing all right. How, how's my audio? Sounds good. Does it? Okay. Yeah, you sound good. Um, what are you using for audio? I'm, I'm struggling with the lighting. I know you told me how important lighting is. The lighting? Uh, yeah, I got it rigged up. <laughs> well, you're looking good, man. You're looking good. And what are you using for sound, though? I've got a shotgun mic. I've got the Comica VM30. Awesome. Very good. Very good. Yeah, we were just talking about the comparison because um, I got a lot of heat on that video. And uh, I was just showing off the specs. Uh, you want to share what camera you use? Pi? What, what camera do you use? Well, you know, based off of uh, your recommendation, I'm rolling with the uh, Lumix S5 II. All right. Well, shout out to you. And I did mention that earlier. I just want people to hear you say it without me just claiming it. Um, and what have you been doing with the camera, like, since you got it? Because I know you're, like, going hard with the video. What, have you, what are you up to? Do you hear? Do, it, it, uh, Pi, do you hear me when I'm, do you hear my microphone or no? You know what? I can hear you. Give me a second. Let me plug in and bear with me, uh, uh, listeners. This is my first time doing a live stream. Okay. I'm um, just trying to get it all together. Let me, let me put on these headphones because I hear a little echo. Yeah. Yeah. That's what's going to help. Put on the headphones. <laughs> You still hear me? Yes, you sound you sound good. You hear me now? How's it sound? You know what? Give me a second, Robert. I'm gonna have to do something with the settings here. Sorry. Sure, take your time, okay? So, uh, Pi, you're just hanging out there, Pi. I still got you. I see you right there. Let me know. Give me a thumbs up when you're ready. Um, hey, Craig says, "Photo people, how's everybody doing? Come on now." Yeah, good to see you, Craig. And then uh, Miles. Hey, Miles is in the house. I like his uh, profile pic right there. Get it closer. Yes, exactly. Get the mic closer. There's a, and I was just talking about that. <laughs> That's the the irony. Um, you all, as as folks, most mo most people know, but those that don't, you always want the source, um, the mic closest to the source of the sound, right? Um, okay. So while we are figuring all that out. Let's let's get back to what I was ranting about, shall we? Let's get back to that. We're in the blue blazes. Okay, here we go. Cool. So here we are. All right, cool. Here we are. As I said, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, all that good stuff. Weather sealed. Okay, up to 30 frames a second for photography. And I've used this camera for photography so much. It's ridiculous. Really, really is. Um, but I just wanted to show you some specs here. Okay. Look, ProRes 422 right there, 10 bit. Um, if you, and then it, it does external 12 bit to your Atomos. There it is over HDMI. Okay. And then um, has one HDMI, USB C uh, port. And a fully articulating tilt screen. Okay. So ultimately, the same dang specs. Same specs, which is quite amazing. Um, it does photos and stills, yada, 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 all this other stuff. You know, there's, a di there, there, there's the um, ISO range. What else that's relevant? And that is... That is look at all these aspect ratios you can pull out of it, but that's every, every camera could do that now. Bit depth 14 bit of photos. That's for photos. 
Here's it. Like I said, externally, you could do 12 bit if you want. Okay. Um, what else is there? And that's basically it. So ultimately, I know a lot of folks were kind of, you know, had their had their shorts in a bunch, but spec to spec, they're very much the same camera. And I'm not surprised. The reason why is um Black Magic is a part of the El Mont Alliance. They've been working with Panasonic. And if you have a Panasonic, last year they released a firmware update that allows um, S5 Mark II, uh, S5 Mark II X, I believe the GH6, and maybe even the GH9 II, can record Blackmagic RAW files externally. Okay? Now, how do you think they're able to do that without being sued? Well, clearly, they're all talking. That's the point of the Elmont Alliance, is that they're leveraging each other's technology and supporting each other in many ways like this, okay? So that's all I wanted to share was just show folks that there are cameras out there that do a fantastic job and that maybe it's a little bit cheaper. It's $1,000 cheaper. So that that's not nothing to mention, right? Let's be honest. All right, let's get to the next thing. Check this out. All right, Sony fanboys, here you go. You got another lens to spend your money on. We're going to talk about it. So. Sony drops the 16 to 25 millimeter f2.8 compact lens. I have not been able to get my hands on it because, well, I don't shoot Sony, but I wanted to mention it because um, this this is a fun focal range for uh, for video. Now I reviewed um, what was it the 16 to 28 f2.8 Sigma lens and. Um, that was a cool, fun little lens. I'm not going to lie. I had a lot of fun with that lens. And now we have the uh, G. Was it? Oh, yeah, it's a G one. Oh, it's a G two. 16 to 25. This is about like two to 300. I think $300 more expensive than the Sigma version. But if you just want the quality, optical quality, I'm sure the autofocus is going to be superb working with any Sony camera. Then this is going to be a win for you. But if you want to save some money, okay, because that's what I'm in the game for. Let's take a look. Sigma 16 to 28 DGDN lens. Let's take a look. And this is just facts here. Okay. Take a look at this one. If you want the same thing, Sony users or L mount in this case, 899, 16 to 28 millimeter. F2.8 DGDN, meaning digital native. Okay, so this is built for uh, to compensate for the uh, flange distance of mirrorless cameras, thus the DGDN um, um, uh, initials. And this would be an excellent alternative to that Sony lens. If you want the focal range and save $300, this is going to be a fantastic buy right here. Shout out to Sigma. This would be a serious contender for me, honestly, to get that 16 to 28 on the, on my uh, Lumix S5 Mark II. Yeah, this is a clutch lens. Uh, the only wide lens I have that's like that is the kit lens, which is right here. Okay, which is this bad boy here, which comes with the which comes with the camera. It's the Lumix. Um, 20 millimeter to 60 millimeter F three, five to five, six. Now this, this, this lens has come in clutch with, for me so many times due to its lightweight 67 millimeter filter thread. Perfect for any gimbal use handheld use. Um, I don't like that. It does that though. I ain't, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I freaking hate lenses that do that, but it is what it is. Okay. Um, but overall, super sharp, great with the autofocus. For a kit lens, it kicks butt. So that's the only lens I have for video that goes wider than 24 millimeter. But again, the widest aperture is 3.5. So that's kind of a... That kind of stinks. So whether you get the Sigma one, okay, 16 to 28 millimeter or the uh 
or the um, Sony right over here, you're going to get some great wide range, right? Wide angle, excuse me. Constant aperture F2.8 is to me, it's just really a financial thing. I like to stay native when possible. I like to stay native when possible. So if the $300 for you is worth it, then go for it. I say Mazel Tov, go do your thing. But if you want to save a couple of bucks, because I don't use wide angles super much, so therefore I don't need it to be um, um, native brand, then heck, the Sigma, you'll save $300. So that is that. Hold on, I have a... Oh, Ken Krug, uh, Rob, what was your favorite tech from NAB? Dude, like, honestly, every time I open up my timeline, like on Instagram or whatever, I always, I see a new something that was um, introduced at NAB. So much so that I think I need to take a visit to NAB. Seriously. It looked fun. It looked fun. And there was so many toys. Uh, it wasn't just photography, super bass related, like WPPI. There were, you know, sound technology, lighting technology, video, uh, accessories for video, like dollies and all sorts of stuff. I mean, there was just a lot. Um, so I honestly think I have to budget out some time to go check out NAB for next year. That would be pretty ridiculous. One thing that I saw, honestly, Black Magic was killing it, right, with their new Ursa and the Ursa Mini. Those were impressive. Um, even this, even a, a Pixis was pretty cool. Okay. It was pretty cool because I, I like the form factor. I like the form factor. I like all the hardware that's built into it. I was like, ooh, that's nice. That means you don't have to buy all this extra external stuff like an XLR plug-in for your mic. That was pretty cool. Um, so and I saw this cool thing for folks who are boom ops. I know nobody wants to be nobody's boom opping on this channel, but it was some real Really cool features that you could buy for your whole uh, harness, shoulder harness, where it, it it basically you get zero vibration through the boom mic um, pole. I was like, damn, this thing's pretty cool because I've used and had to teach people to, you know, my boom op, how to boom op correctly for my short films. And I could hear, I hear everything. I'm like, ah, these guys moving the mic or the, or the X. The LAR cable hit the hit the boom pole and this oh man so it was like it was just like cool like nerdy stuff but there was a lot there um I have to go there to be really say what would be my favorite otherwise I'm just seeing what I'm seeing online and a lot of times it's like you know what others have deemed popular you know so I'm sorry I can't give you a straightforward answer uh what do you think of the Lumix 24 to 70 I love it okay Lumix 24 to 70 2.8 is a great lens. Here's the thing. Here is the cold hard fact. Okay. I'm going to recommend you get the Sigma 24 to 70 F 2.8. Reason why it's slightly more compact and it's a lot cheaper, like maybe a thousand dollars cheaper. It's ridiculous. Okay. Miles like crazy. Um, here it, here it is right here. All right. Take a look. <clears throat> here it is right here. This is the Sigma DGDN art lens. 24 to 70 F 2.8. Right. Let's see if you guys can see that. There you go. Like that. Um, What's the filter thread? 82. Okay. So everybody's got a filter that's 82. There you go. It's a gorgeous lens. Awesome. Oh, God. Anyway, it, it's a great lens. Well-built, beautiful art lens. We all know Sigma makes some pretty sexy lenses. Okay. Now, um, with that said, I would say get this because of the price difference. And because it's L mount, right? So you will not be losing in terms of autofocus performance. I've used all, I have a ton of prime lenses over here. I think five of them or something. And Sigma, if I'm not going to choose a Lumix lens, I'm going with Sigma every day. Okay. So 
you know, you get your, your button there, focus, manual focus. You get this. It's a great lens. It's a great lens. So that's my um my shtick right there. All right. So if you're not going to go with the Lumix, and I understand why, because the price is killer. I'm not going to lie. And it's a bigger lens. So, you know, with these gimbals, I'm not sure which one you got, unless you have the uh, RS3 Pro uh, and the RS4 Pro. You know, these lenses start weighing like pounds. Instead of ounces, it's pounds real quick. All right. Uh, let me clean up this madness. All right. I hope that helps, Miles. Uh, versus the six. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, there you go. I just answered that. I hope that helps, man. Let me know down below, okay? And I've used them both. Use them both. Again, the reason why I'm using the... um. The, the Lumix is just, well, because I have it. And then secondly, I love this focus clutch. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Okay. Boom. Now I'm right into uh, manual. And then when I want to go back to continuous, I just push it right back. I'm back into continuous phase detect autofocus. Boom. Oh, manual. Okay. Here we go. You know what I mean? I don't know. I just like it. It is what it is. But it, there is a large price difference. Okay. And it's a bigger and it's a bigger lens. Okay, let me see if you can see this. Let me see if you can see this, guys. Jesus. Here we go. All right, Miles, take a look. Take take a look. You can see you can see like there we go. It's about there. Okay. Ah, maybe it's. Yeah, yeah. It's a little bit wider. Okay. Anyway, you make your decision. Biggest difference is the price. That's the only reason why I would say it. It's not performance. It's not anything else. A 24 to 70 is going to have some weight. Right? It's a medium zoom lens. But quality, both are great. Um, then you should head to Cine Gear. Yeah, actually, you're right. You're absolutely right. L.A. is way more doable. But in June, I'm looking to go to a film festival in um, in Miami. It's called the uh, Black American Film Festival. It's a huge film festival, networking, etc. cetera. And um, so I'm looking to go there and network. So I won't be able to, but for sure, Cine. And then there's Market, Market, something or other in L.A. that happens, I think, in October. Market, something or other. I can't remember the name. Of that event, I, I want to go there too. But yes, Ken Kruk, are you going to Cine Gear? Let me know. Uh, right on. I appreciate your insight. There you go. Thank you very much. I'm just trying to help out. Like I said, all, all this stuff here, I I bought I bought this stuff here. Um, all these lenses during COVID, I went hard into paint with uh Sigma lenses during COVID because that's when I start to get real serious with making my short films, and then. I wanted to shoot all with primes because I saw so many uh, dope cinematographers like they had prime lenses. So I was like, screw it. I'll go prime. But since I can't get cine primes, I'll just go get Sigma primes. And little, little do you know, if you didn't check out my Sigma booth interview at WPPI, um, that's when I got educated that Sigma art lenses have the same performance Um color characteristic, lens characteristic as their cine lenses. So if you want the same quality of, of uh, performance in terms of um, uh, uh, video captured with the Sigma cine lenses that are like five grand a pop, go get yourself an art lens, okay? For a thousand, eleven hundred dollars, nine hundred dollars, you're gonna see the same quality. So you know, shout out to Sigma, all right? And they're not paying me for that drop. I'm just telling you what it is. It is what it is, okay? Pa, you're good? Awesome. All right, let's get you back, baby. Come on. There we go. Hey, I'm going to have to work out that uh, the, the headphones later. All right. Can you hear me? Yes, good. Awesome. All right, so let's go back to what you're up to. What have you been filming lately? Well, you know, Robert, you know, I did <laughs> I filmed one event, my first event, and the footage was beautiful, but the audio was, it, it was horrible because 
you know, I may had a big lesson. I was uh, had the shotgun mic, but I was like 10 feet away. And mm. that doesn't work. Like you said, you need to be right up on your subject. So it was just a, a learning lesson for me. It was my first time using a mic. It had a couple of settings. But uh, since then, I, I filmed a guy like on the street at a flea market. OK. Uh, well, at a farmer's market. That video came out good. You know, I got close. The audio audio was clean. So, you know, I'm just going through the growing pains, learning what to do, what not to do. So learned a big lesson about audio through that whole scenario. Fantastic. So you learned through trial and error, literally. Yes. yes. Awesome. And uh, when I looked at your footage, it the footage itself was pretty good. You had it framed up pretty well. You um, colors look nice. A little noisy, but you know you could fix some of that. And um, that you did a pretty solid job. I was actually expecting something different. No, no offense right. against you, <laughs> but you, everything was good. It was the sound that stuck out the most. Well, you know, as and, you know, your your footage could be beautiful, but if your sound is whack, you're done. Hundred percent, hundred percent, and uh, uh, and that's why I wanted you to share that because earlier I was sharing that uh, little tidbit. And uh, uh, and uh, David backed me up on that. Like, if you got, if you don't have great sound, it, you have nothing. And yeah, it's so nothing. true. Then you're like, oh, I don't want to give that to that person because it just ruined the whole, it just brought the whole project down, right. you know? And good thing they let me, you know, come to practice because if they would have right. paid me, I would have had no problem giving them a full refund. <laughs> right there. Yeah. 100%. And see, and um, that's another great lesson is that. For those that are looking to get better in photography or videography, show up, shoot for free. Obviously, communicate your your new. A lot of people understand that. And they'll give you grace, and um, and learn before you get the client that's going to drop you five hundred bucks to hang out or whatever it's going to be. Right. And I mean, I've done the same. I started with uh, event photography uh, before portraits, and guess what? I messed up tons of times having a bad lens or not knowing my settings right and stuff like that, how to freeze them and come out all blurry. Right. But then, um, but that's when you're supposed to mess up. So I, 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 I uh, commend you for jumping in the way you are. Hey. Didn't, you, didn't you go to a flea, uh, not a flea market, a, a, a food, food market or something? Yeah. That's where I, I did another video. Okay. Of a guy at, um, at the uh, farmer's market. And that, that video came out good. Sound came out good. I mean, it was outside. Okay. You know, the first video I did that I did send you, that was actually like in a loft. They had mm. live music, like drums. It was a lot of echo. I don't know if I would ever even attempt to do that type of, because it was just too much going on with the sound the reverb. in a loft. Yeah, it was, it was a lot going on. Well, remember what I recommended is that next time plug directly into the source, aka the mixer, right? Okay. Using the audio outs and then um, plug that. And then uh, I was re recommending like maybe plug that into your uh, wireless transmitter and have that send it to you wirelessly to your camera. That could work uh, theoretically. Okay. So, okay. but you were this close from getting it. But I understand if you can't do that, then here's another thing. Record the event, but then add music over it later and just really? track, okay. trash all the audio. Okay. Make like a promo video of the event. Like, oh, this happened that night. And just add maybe if you can get, whoops, if you can get the um, the song from one of the major artists and play it over the, over the uh, video. Does that make okay. sense? Makes sense. So that's a little trick later on. Now, okay. what did you use for audio at the farmer's market? Same, uh, the same mic, the uh, Comica VM30. Okay. And, uh, you know, I have a little uh, Rode mic, but I just purchased this VM30 because the beautiful thing about this, mm -hmm. you can take it off the uh, mount on there, you know, because I got it on my uh, cold mount. You okay. can detach the mic and use it like a, a lavalier mic. Oh, shoot. Okay. It's a wireless. It actually has wireless capability. It's a standalone All shotgun right. mic, but it has a dual function as a, uh, like a lavalier mic. Like a lav mic. That's great. Yeah. So, like, so you basically have two mics in one, or at least two exactly. use cases. Awesome. 
Hold on. I think we have some comments here. Uh, King Crook. Yes. Cine, Sigma Cine lenses are the truth. They're amazing. I, I really want to get at least um, one. You know, I think it's like a 25 to 50 or something like that. Um, only thing is they're APS-C, which is fine. Most Cine people don't care, but it would be nice to have it in full frame. But yes, they are gorgeous. Um, Craig says, man, there's so many people out there that have no business charging to new and inexperienced. Absolutely. Um, and that would be me, Craig C. But hey, <laughs> I told him I'm practicing. Exactly. See, if and that's the right way to do it, you know. Um, you're absolutely right. Uh, but you suggest they work a little for free, man, they'll take your head off. Yeah, some people will you, you I mean, obviously. Um, like Kenny Rogers, you got to know when to hold them, know when to fold them. And some people try to get over a hundred percent, but you got to earn your stripes somewhere, right? You could shoot at home, you know, farmer's market, all you want and all that stuff. But until you're in a, an environment where in which you're hoping to get paid for, it's hard to like make that up that scenario. Right. So you gotta, so this is a fair way to just get in there. Um, but then draw, you know, have boundaries. This is all I'm doing. This is all I'm going to give you. That's it. Right. Don't don't give away the kitchen sink. Don't allow it. Oh, can you cut it up and make vertical videos for it? Can you do this? Can you do it? No, 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 no. This is what I said I was going to do. And you told me, sure, show up. That's it. So you got to just make sure you put your foot down, folks, if you're going to volunteer. I mean, um, I volunteer when I shoot these runway shows. I don't get paid. I don't get paid at all. Now, I think after 13 years, I deserve to get paid. I know what I'm getting. I'm going there to create content. I share it with all of you out there. Um, I might be testing out like my new softbox I tested out last time. I get to network. I'm getting something out of it. But they're getting exactly what I told them they're going to get and nothing else, nothing more. Right. I say, I'll give you a copy of the photos. They don't choose the photos. I choose the photos. I edit. They, there you go. So... Here's a pro and a con to uh, volunteering, but I think you're doing the, the right way, personally. Uh, oh, yeah, we know that. We know that, Craig. Yeah, yeah okay, he said he wasn't. Oh, no, you good, Craig. Craig. You good. Yeah. You good, Craig. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but, yes, people do, will take advantage. That's 100% a fact. Um, I have somebody right now I'm trying to deal with, and I'm like, look, I gave more than I normally would, and uh, that's it. No, no, right. tell. And remember, the law is on your side. Uh, copyright law. Okay, read that over once or twice or three times. And um, I actually had a video about that. And um, you, if you know your rights, you'd be amazed how much rights you have as a as a photographer or content creator. And people try to really try to bogard you and intimidate you. It's like no, no. First of all, as soon as I create that image, I own that. I own that. So if I don't want to give it to you, I don't have to give it to you if you did not pay me for as a work for hire. And technically, when I when I get make when you make a headshot and you give someone a headshot, you're giving them non-exclusive rights. So they don't own, they're not the copyright owners. They just earn the right to use those photos by law off top, unless it's specified. Like if Clorox Bleach hired me to shoot their product campaign, right? They own it. I am a work for hire. I'm doing independent contractor. You're hiring for this job. But in general, you shoot with models or whatever the stuff you're doing, that you're giving them the non-exclusive right to use it for social media, whatever it is. That, but you you're the copyright owner. Okay. okay. So yeah, that's why I say, folks, know your cotton know know your rights. And and question, Robert, what's your do and I don't know if I'm phrasing this right. What's your normal uh, turnaround time? Like if you do an event, uh, what until you give them the what is it deliverables? What's what's your normal time frame for that? Well, um, me personally, it depends on the project. If it's like an editorial, well, first of all, okay, like right now I'm shooting an editorial. I already shot it. I shot. I do three shoots for this magazine, a paid editorial, like. Decent money, okay? So they they reached out to me. We did the thing. They're like, okay, we need all these photos by by such a date. Now I'm waiting for them to give me the selections. But in general, when it comes to a client like that, 
I ha- I already have in mind what the deadline is. Oh, okay. Like, um, the photo the photography had to be done by the twenty fourth. I smashed that by like ten days. Like they had those photos back because I don't play. And then now, uh, I mean, the photography done. Now I'm still waiting for them to choose the proofs. In general, one week. So if you like okay. headshots or something like that, the reason why is you want to over promise. Uh, what is it? Under promise, over deliver. Right. So if you're like, oh, I get these back to you in three days and I don't know your cat dies or, you know, so you don't know what happens. Right. You get stuck because all the protest on the damn bridge, you know, you lose a day there and you're not in the right mind frame. I'm telling you, grace, give yourself grace spirit and be honest. OK, okay? editing 100 percent. The editing takes time. And the way I edit, I'll edit. And then I'll leave, come back to it the next day, and then look at the photo and see how it's speaking to me, and then decide to move forward. So you don't know, you don't want to be, oh, I'll turn these over in two, in, two, in two days. And then you're rushing through the editing process. You'll miss things, this, that, and the third. And um, so in general, I would say a week turnaround. I would okay. say, oh, I'll get these back to you within a week. And then if you get to them in two days, guess what? You look like a boss. Okay. And, and, you know, that's one of the reasons, because this is all new to me, right? The editing is new, uh, but that was one of the reasons why I chose the Lumix S5 II, because it does have a feature, a feature called real-time LUT. And so for, right. begin, for beginners like me, I don't have to spend, I mean, I, I eventually want to learn color grading, but, but with the real-time LUT, mm-hmm. it kind of, you know, puts those colors in all automatically, right? And yeah. I just only have to do a little tweaking, right? Yeah. So yeah, it bakes in that LUT. Bakes in the LUT. But you just got to make sure your your lighting and everything else is spot on, right? Because it's hard to adjust. Um, one thing is like when you're in post production, when you add a LUT, you can decrease the intensity of it. You go to ten percent, fifty percent, or or a hundred percent of the LUT, right? Effect. In that real time, it's just a hundred percent. Does that make That's sense? It. You can't. You can't adjust the intensity of that LUT. Okay. Okay, at least for now. Um, so that's one negative. Second thing is um, when I was talking about turnaround, that was for photography. For photography, that's a whole nother beast. Um, I just turned around a project for a nonprofit. I had to re-edit nine videos for them. That took like a month. Well, they know because I've worked with them tons of times that – I have like numerous projects. I got you guys to deal with every Thursday. I got all this stuff going on. So they're not going to get it back super quick. They understood that. But I just turned it in um, um, uh, two days ago to the clients. They were very happy to receive it and everything. But And that was nine testimonial videos for that nonprofit. So with all that said, you will still you'll start to gauge how comfortable you are with editing and processing as well as your shooting style, you'll improve on that. So you'll edit less. Um, you know, you'll need to fix a lot of things later, less than you normally would. <clears throat> so then you'll start to gauge, oh, okay, I could turn this around in about a week. I just shot something that the way I got that gig. Oh, I'm not sure if I told you, but I got a big gig with that Lumix S5 Mark II because of what I created out of it. And I flipped that project around in six hours. Like really? I was just, I went hard in the paint, tons of coffee. I did like three to four hours and woke up, did two hours, boom. And they wanted it within 72 hours. I gave it to them in six hours. And guess what? I got the job. Hello. So so like you'll just get more efficient with your workflow, but doing what you're doing, messing up, figuring out how to improve, getting the tools to better improve. Like, oh, my sound isn't good. Let me get better mic. Let me get this. Because that's that's when you start making good purchase decisions to solve a problem. Right, not just to get it, and trust me, I'm 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 one to get shit. <laughs> okay, but you ultimately want to get things that are solving a problem, and then um, because then when you get to editing it, everything is great. Now you just have to cut and little tweaks. Right. Not like damn, I gotta fix this. Oh, I didn't need to waste this time fixing it for an hour if I had only done X. Like a. Like I say, man, it's all new to me, man. The V-Log, the Cine D, the real-time blood, it's all, hey. I want you to uh, try to use Cine D, at least. I remember uh, you I told you. me you like the Cine D. Cine D is great because you still have a dynamic range to flex, right? 
to correct, bring down the highlights, increase shadows, stuff like that. But it's not r complicated to color grade compared to like straight up vlog. It's mu it, it, and you can still apply LUTs to it, by the way. Really? Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'll show you that like when we hang out or something. But but the point is that like the point is that um, you want to. It's kind of like when we use manual, right? Hey, man. I know manual can be intimidating, but if you're uh, shooting auto all the time, you'll never shoot manual. And real-time LUT is kind of like auto in terms of color grading, right? It's okay. applied. So Cine D is kind of like going to aperture priority or shutter priority. It's like okay. almost there, but it's not quite, but you're learning how to change the dials, See, right? You got to take off the train wheel sooner or later. Got right? it, 100%. And you'll... You'll you, trust me. You'll get more. Um, you'll get better. You'll just get better. Your eye gets better. Your everything gets better. Um, because eventually you're gonna pass your footage on to let's say an editor or whoever, and it just makes their job easier and thus pay, charging you less. Okay. Right? Because they don't have to fix your mess. I I know because I just worked with a colorist, and he's like, "Wow, your your footage is great." <laughs> He said, I got to add this to my portfolio because guess what? I, I did so much of the uh, correct lighting and everything else that he just needed to do his thing and made it look nice. Okay. And uh, so that's why later on, you know, experiment with that Cine D. Experiment with all that, and then you'll you'll get a little bit better. Okay. okay. Uh, let's see here. Looks like we are caught up so far. Let me see about this. Uh, we talked about these lenses. Let me see here. What's the other thing? I got something up here. We got Sigma. We got this. Okay, this thing is crazy. Okay, I got to talk about this. This thing is nuts. Look at this camera. Okay, we're all sitting here talking about 4K and a 6K, right? Look at this behemoth. All right. Black Magic drops uh, groundbreaking 7K. 17K, excuse me, 17K. That's right. Large format cinema camera. Golly. This thing is a monster. It's literally King Kong. It should be called that, but it's not. Um, so obviously we know that Blackmagic released the Pixis 6K, which I've been talking about, and the Ursa Cine 12K. But they even teased about the large format, 17K. Golly, I wonder how much this thing is. I hope it shares it. Let's take a look. Okay. Let's take a look. Maybe drop a price. Um, this will use a 50 by 8 by 24, basically, millimeter image size sensor. Um, so this thing is damn near twice the size. Well, not almost twice the size as the uh, 12K sensor. Um, that is freaking crazy. Yeah, that's nearly a 30% increase from the 12K sensor. That is nuts. All right. Uh, let's see what else it says. It is 140.9 megapixels. Golly, that is crazy. 140.9 megapixel sensor. That's crazy. I, I think if I'm reading that, oh no, that's just pec pixels. Be right back, right? Pixels, yeah. Um, that's crazy. The 12K has a 98.8. Jesus. Christ, that's nuts. So Black Magic is not playing, but I'm I bet we're gonna see some of this somewhere else. I'm hoping the Lumix S1H Mark II when it comes out, that's gotta at least be 8K. It has to be at least 8K. Oh, that's cool. Look, as uh built-in ND filters. That's pretty cool. That's pretty awesome. Um, let's see. Does it say anything about price though? No, but wow, look at that rig. Doesn't that rig look awesome? Good Lord. God, I'd love to have that. Okay, so look at this. Um, the Ursa Cine 12K is 15 grand. So this thing's probably going to be 25, something like that. 25, I'm thinking 25, maybe 30, probably around 25. Um, oh, okay, here we go. Oh, okay. So the Aria Lexus 65 large format camera for Hollywood features. Da, 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 da. Very similar. Have a Aria 
uh, Aries uh, camera and lens cost was about 10 to 12 grand to rent per day. Golly, per day. Yeah, I don't think I could I could swing that. Um, you could swing it, Robert. <laughs> but, but my headshots would have to be like five grand a pop. <laughs> Good Lord. That's per day. I mean, I don't know what to tell y'all. I don't know what to tell you. But 17K, large format. That's crazy. That's pretty awesome. I wish I could have it. It looks absolutely like a dream come true, though. Uh, King Crook says uh, 17K resolution filming at 65 uh, millimeter format. Black Magic wasn't playing. No, they're not. That is that is like literally King Kong status right there. 17K? Shut all of us up. Shut all our mouths right up real quick. And then Craig says, uh, immediately I get a little overwhelmed with video. ND filters, settings, color grading, all of it. I just need to do it more, not care if it's perfect. Exactly. That's the point. That, that's exactly what Pi is doing. Right? That's exactly what he's hey, doing. He's like, you can only I watch. Know. Hey, you can only watch so many YouTube videos. Sooner or later, you got to dip your foot in the water, right? That's right. There you go. Exactly. Uh, oh, there is a system of video. It's all matter of practice. Yep, exactly. That's it. Hey, man, I, I was bad, too. Are you kidding me? I was I'm my, sorry, first, my first. Me. Yeah, no worries. My first doc. My first doc. Let me see. Let me see. All right, guys. You know what? We're gonna take a trip. We're gonna take a trip. All right. Let's go right here. I'm gonna show you guys my first doc. How's that sound? Um, and I'll show you. It wasn't long, but I just want you to see the footage, so you guys don't think I'm like talking schmack. All right. Day one film. Okay. All right. So you guys can see my uh, day one films. Um, YouTube. Can you, can you see it pie or no? I don't oh. see it. There we go. There it is. All right. All right, everybody check this out. Um, there we go. So this is my other channel, Day One Films. I just post my stuff on this. I don't like make videos and stuff. I just I just use it to post my videos to you know share and whatever. Um, let's go to my. Let me see if I have my first one on here somewhere. Uh, the art we know. What the heck is it? Okay, let's go to videos. Um. Or is it? That's the second. Okay, here we go. All right, everybody, look. This is my first one ever made. I only, I only made that. Okay, guys, I gotta give you. I'm not gonna play the audio just in case I might copy, copy strike myself. I don't know how that will work. But um, let me show this thing is off. Turn off the volume. Um, but everybody, I'm telling you right now. I'm showing you. We all start at zero. Okay. But I had an idea. I knew that I wanted to go back to revisiting my passion of filmmaking. But I knew I couldn't do it unless I started it. Right, Pi? So I was like, right. screw it. I'm just going to make something. So I came up with an idea. I called up an artist friend. I said, look, I'm going to do like an artist biopic or whatever of you. And I'm just going to ask you questions. And I literally put this together, met up with the subject in 45 minutes filmed it and then like by the end of the day because i was so excited i edited it and edited it and turned it over within a day so this is what i came up with okay and this is what literally start me on my path to making more short films okay and why now i am you know um pre in pre-production trying to put together my first feature film all right it all started here so i'm letting you know we all start at zero let's see it Let's oh. see it. Let's see it. <laughs> you need the drum roll. We need the drum roll. For real. Let me see. The, uh, the... Okay, you can't hear it, though. Whoop! What did I do? G Adventures oh, introduces oh my the God. Hold on, I'm sorry. All right, there we go. Okay. Okay. So here we go. Look at this. I was hand-holding here. Hand holding here, GH5, I 
think. I think I had the GH5 here. Handhold, GH5, tripod, tripod. See, I remember it all. Oh, that, that is handhold, excuse me. Here we go. Art means me. You know, mm. so I'm just showing you Art like what we all, I all start can see from it zero, in like for real, for real. Up. But look, I know basic gotta thank composition the universe, for photography. You know, for designing it in such a special you know, way. I, you like, I'm not shooting with so much anything pro. I'm from telling it you, this before itself. I bought my first real uh, tripod for video. Tomorrow. Like, I was like, this is when I bought it. I was like, damn, I need, I need good stills. How am I going to do that? I need to get a good tripod. Hmm. Okay. I used a little 15 inch slider for that one shot when I was pulling away. To always be creating, and to always have ideas. This is literally how you're making a statement. How it all, that, how it all began. You know, you know, you're putting and, out uh, your opinion. Dude, and I, I didn't know where I was going. No one was helping me. On your side for sure, no one was, was trying to give me advice. And you know, but I, I just find new ways to expand I knew some that basic idea. Edit, and, and, and I just went from there. And here I'm just having a conversation with her about art I think and what certain it means for her and I guess how a better does it help her is, express herself, etc., etc. Are et artists respected enough? And the seer, and then and from here, not. people are like, "You should do a Due series to called The Art We Know." The fact that and and that we are see, I went and shot B roll around Oakland when it wasn't as as, really as uh, scary too. Only if you're and, uh, in the top of the top. This is right before series. COVID. This and is 2019. Lower than that, they will just All try right. to do so everything I'm just they showing can folks that like, hey, I, I did I started at zero. The universe would exist. I was doing. They think we're mad now, but, but imagine because if of we didn't have that type of I was able to do more of A madness that's controlled. Okay. I, I just don't where think I'm I would going. I do photography as a hobby, so I can practice it. for I think Exactly, I, exactly. I'm very direct. I'm just showing you all, like, dude, like, this is my first, first, first real shit turn that hey, down a little bit cursing. but with without that i think i would be a very abrasive uh, <laughs> no bob your first work is giving spike lee hey brother thank you very much man but look framing right shooting high shooting low right i have multiple mediums but my main ones are All stuff i had to learn photography i mic'd her up see um, that mic fashion, right on her uh just styling mostly right myself. there and you see it on top of her uh you can see painting. it i can see it we're already workaholics let me see if you, you can't see my go cursor, go go and never right stop imagine and then um it was like with no a lav art. mic like, it would just be the first more go 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 never stop and lav mic i think we'd have anarchy i don't think beast. we'd have it just the democracy or, but i have it there see look at that that was just all handheld <laughs> handheld you know look at the exposure oh anyway but we all start somewhere my exposure game is much better, but I knew where I was going with it. I wish you guys could hear it though. I mean, I think it's going to help shape history because there's so many people with cameras now. We're gonna have so much more documentation anyway. Um, just on what's going on and in different types so, of views. Yeah. And so the point eyes. is that like- I feel like, cause before it was like, you know, only ah, select amount oh, of hey. people could because they can afford the cameras now. It's like everyone has a phone. Thank you. So everyone's oh, here we kind go. of creating I meant history for, at this for point. Mark. Thank you, Mark, for tuning in, man. Thank you very much. I was just showing off my first work, my first uh, short film. So there yeah, you go. It wasn't too bad for people who don't really know. I mean, hey. <laughs> exactly, you know. You and know, then um, 100%. And, uh, you know, for my first go, hey, I'm still happy with it. I'm very yeah. happy. I've seen worse. <laughs> right all right so but the point is that like we all start at zero try photography same thing with photography we all start at zero all of our cameras start with zero accuations right you know shutter counts so just get out there and shoot man it's all good all right i sh hey i'm bright i was say brave enough but like you know, look i showed you my first project i could have showed you my latest project where it looks much better I could have shown, you know what I mean? I'm going to show you my first crappy project. I wouldn't even say it was crappy. It was just like my first project where I really didn't know what I was doing. I had an idea from all the documentaries I've watched. So I was like, okay, I got an idea. But like, to your point, you got to get out there and shoot and make, oh, I messed up. How do I fix that? Okay. Uh, no one is going to get better at photography or videography without taking ownership. You have to take ownership. You have to be like, that was my fault and then put your money where your mouth is in terms of learning or buying gear or whatever it is to help you out uh sound is coming through oh okay sound was coming through oh did you hear the sound 
uh, Pi when I was playing that video or no? Yeah, I could hear. You heard it playing? Yeah. Yeah, the sound was coming through. Oh, when she was talking? Yeah. Oh, shoot. I wonder why I couldn't hear, hear my own sound. Isn't that something? Awesome. Well, I'm glad you guys all heard it. And uh, trust me, I'd improve this sound quality too. But it was fair. You know, you heard her. Um, looks phenomenal. Thank you very much, Mark. Thank you very much. And uh, we literally just got in from shooting a wedding. There you go. <laughs> Tell Tiffany I said hi. Please do. And uh, Rob had titles and text on Flea. <laughs> yeah, brother. I had my little... Uh, that's when I just started to really try to concentrate on like After Effects and like little titles and, sh and stuff. You know, it is what it is. Hey, like I said, everybody, that was my first one. And um, I think I have it. I want to say I have it on Amazon Prime. Like when Amazon Prime lets you used to do short films. Uh, now they don't take short films. Um, awesome. Thank you, Mark. And, and, and Robert. Yes, sir. Somebody came in. They said they just finished doing I forgot their name. They said they just finished doing their wedding. Uh, Mark. You, you said you don't like shooting weddings and why? Well, I, it's not that I don't like shooting weddings, actually. I don't mind shooting weddings at all. Okay. Um, but for as far as, like, what am I known for? I'm not known for weddings, photography, or videography. I'm known for more of the fashion photography, you know? Okay. Um, working with the models and stuff like that and headshots and stuff. So that's just what I'm known for. It's not that I'm against it. If, if, if someone pays my family portrait fee, I'm not going to be like, you know okay. and and weddings don't bother me really um so no not at all and they're a good payday this would be honest okay? okay so to me they've never hurt me at all i'm just not known for it no one ever comes to me for wedding photography tips they come for me for everything we're talking about today okay. videography and fashion photography portraits stuff like that okay so i just lean on my on my uh truth if you will um, Craig says that would be a fun live stream. Everyone show their first short film doc. Yeah, that would be fun. That would be fun. I just submitted my feature doc to another film festival. So I'm excited to see what happens. It's a London film festival. So we'll see what happens there. Um, now my, now look at, um, where let's go back to the here real quick. Let me see. Yeah, Craig. See, we we looking forward to seeing your uh, your first short film, Craig. See next uh, next yeah, episode, exactly. next week. Yeah, brother. Sh set, Craig, send me the uh, link to yours so we can feature that. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mark. Uh, same, Robert. I'm more auto uh, exactly automotive. Exactly, exactly. Uh, love weddings, but I love cars. Yeah, I saw. Hey, Mark is sitting there putting together a, a go kart. If you guys follow him on Facebook, I mean, this brother is putting together like a go kart. I'm not sure if that's his son or somebody he's working with, but I tell you, that go kart was not the go karts I used to ride when I was a kid, and uh, looked pretty bad. Hey, oh, hey, oh. So, yeah, that that go kart is no joke. Uh, he said, "Now I'm sweating." <laughs> Hey, brother, I'm just saying, if I did it, you could do it. Uh, hey, Rob. Yes, sir. Let me interrupt. I got to roll, man. I'm having lighting issues over here, man. No worries. Yeah. Thank you very much for tuning in. I'm going to be on Ooh. for another 20 minutes or so, so you're all good. All okay? right, man. Everybody take care. Have a good evening. Thanks Thank again for, for everything you do, bro. Hey, no problem. I'll text you later. Have a good all one, right. okay? Okay, bye. Bye. All right, everybody. Take a look at, like... Where is this? Look at the, this one was like a little comedy situation right here. Okay. And um, take a look. Now this one, I, I did a lot of pre-production. See the quality is much better. The movements are better. The lighting is better. Okay. I shot this uh, a year and a half ago. So you can see the big difference. Okay. Okay. This is a GH6 handheld, which has awesome stabilization. Okay. And then that was a long cut. All handheld, no gimbal. <laughs> Boom. <clears throat> see, you can see here the big, big improvement in cuts, editing, uh, lighting. 
Okay. You do know what time it is, don't you? Yeah, I edited everything too. I did all the lighting. I shot it. Okay. I am off today, and, though. Uh, Good morning, the by the way. The thing is that we all not learn by just doing. That's what? the best way. I said not anymore. All this looks you're a not million off. times better. It's not a good morning anymore. Dang. Grumpier than uh, usual, aren't we? Can you get your coffee Maybe order wrong again, Agent Derrickson? I'm much right. tired. I don't care what anybody says. That camera is still beast. Um, but you'll get even more room out of that. I really. But the point is, you can see the difference. I need you to examine the footage. This one was trace the movement of a particular at the Oakland Film Festival. Okay. So anyway, enough of that. Enough of the video stuff. Um here we go. Hey, finally, uh Hero Shot says, Hey, finally off the road. I took your advice on message every fashion show in the area, and I got in. With Fashion Fusion in Miami this Saturday for their 420. Hey, oh, man, that is amazing. Hero Shots, congratulations, man. Seriously, everybody give them a big uh, congrats. Seriously, congrats. Um, I'm glad my advice helped you out in any particular way. If you have any other further questions or you just want to vent or share, let me know. Congrats, man. Tag me in the photos. Let me know how your photos come out from the fashion show, okay? Tag me on Instagram. I for sure want to check it out. Uh, Mark t Mark comes back. My son races in NASCAR. You see, oh, shoot. Dang, let me give him a quick. Okay, when he's 18, you can play with that. Anyway, um, this one was on Z8. Oh, okay. And looks phenomenal, Robert. Super smooth. Thank you very much. My point was just to show you the difference from the first to the second. Lighting, composition, framing, editing, because I color graded it myself. I did everything except the acting. And I wasn't the writers. The actors were the writers. They wrote that script. So with all that said, I'm just saying I'm, I'm practicing what I preach right in front of you to show you there's nothing special. There's nobody here to help me. No, you know, not not a pity parade, but I'm just saying no one's here to help me except by messing up. My mistakes are my teachers, and that should be for you as well. All right. Uh, big improvement for sure. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Um, thanks a lot, y'all. I'm nervous, but excited at the same time. Well, congrats, man. Seriously, that that's a big win. That's a big, big win. And it worked. I, I'm t it worked. The things I'm trying to share with all of you are things that anybody could apply. But the 95% of people, I'm going to say, matter of fact, scratch that. 98% of people do not apply. Do not apply. Just applying put, sets you apart, makes you a winner. Okay? Thank you very much, Mark. Couldn't agree more, Robert. That evolution is proof in the skills learned over time. Thank you very much, brother. I really, really appreciate it. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, I think SpongeBob has something for you, too. Let me hold on. What did he say? He just said something. Thank you for your patronage. That's right. And uh, I'm going to give you a... Uh, oh, yeah! Or Macho Man Randy Savage. Uh, but thank you very much, Mark. I'm just... I, I'm. This is what I... In between creating content for all of you to enjoy, which I really appreciate, I'm out here hustling with the, with the rest of you. I have bills to pay, um, and, uh, and trust me, in California, it's not easy. So I'm grinding. I'm learning. How do I separate myself? How do I improve myself? And then I immediately am thinking, how do I make how do I make my lessons a good lesson for all of you out there? Okay. Uh, exactly. Slap it to a slim gym. <laughs> hey, the wrestlers in the nineties were the, sh anyway, or I'll say early nineties, mid nineties. Um, so, oh, with that said, like I said, I'm going to be making a video this weekend about how my videography skills earned me 80 K for a gig. Okay. Listen to me. I just got a gig. 80K, that's $80,000 with my Lumix S5 Mark II. 
Okay? We're talking about a camera that's under $2,000. Sure enough, with the rig and everything else, it's, it's over that. But with this camera right here, this setup, this lens, 24 to 70, 2.8, everything else, $140, $150 little uh, um, monitor. Nothing special here. It's not even a small rig V-mount battery. It's a newer, okay? Because I like saving money. This get this right here plus my my skill set, okay, got me a gig, eighty thousand dollars. All right, and I'm sharing you with that not to gloat because there's nothing to gloat about it. All this is a grind. Ain't no ain't no gloating in the, in, in the in the in the uh, trenches around here. Nothing but mud and dirt. But I'm just letting you know that. If you apply yourself, learn from your mistakes, take ownership, seek good advice, and then put it into action, the action has to be there. Knowledge is great. Without action, you're just a smart idiot. Okay? And then I was competing against, you know how many other videographers wanted that gig I just got? I got the offer. I confirmed it today. Before I jumped on phone with you. Okay, I did it around 12 o'clock. You know how many other people I had to compete against? And we had to do the same kind of project. And it was the most simplest thing that I was told that separated me from others. It was crazy. I was like, wow. He's like, yeah, that's that's why I felt more confident going with you. I was like, dang, I'm going to share that in the video. Not to brag about how much, but to let you know how just the smallest of things separate you from the rest of the pack. Like for me. I used to complain about my YouTube channel being too small. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody, for helping me reach 8,000 subs. Thank you all very much. Okay? Thank you all. And I, I would complain. I'm like, God, I'm looking at these channels. They're blowing up. They're doing all these numbers, this, that, and third. And I had to admit it. I had to swallow this big pill. I'm just not making enough content. I'm not as consistent. I'm not as disciplined. That's that in the third. Then I start getting on my game, especially this year. I start going hard in the paint. I think you all noticed going live a lot more, um, posting way more content, a lot more, shooting a lot more for all of, for the. And then I noticed a huge difference. So clearly, the problem wasn't my competitors; it was me. It was my work ethic and what I was not doing, because my skill set was there, my knowledge is there. But I just wasn't doing it. I wasn't doing. I wasn't putting it into action. I wasn't just saying, screw it, make the video, make the video, make the video. Who cares? It gets 100 views, whatever. Just make it, move to the next one. And then I start to see results. That's what a lot of photographers, new photographers, videographers, they do not do. They don't just start doing it. And I know it sounds so stupid. I know, uh, who is it? Shay LaBeouf has that video. Just do it. But it is that simple, though but yet so hard for many people, okay? So I'm going to make that video. I hope it inspires you all to just do those simple, fine things that's, that truly separates you from the pack because the winners do what the 99% don't do. That's straight up. And let me tell you, all the 9% could do what that 1% does. That's the, sh that's, the, that's the shameful part. That's the shameful part. The 1% does what the 99% can doesn't do, but yet the 99% can do what that 1% does, but they don't, they just don't. Okay. Um, yeah, yes, yes, Mark. All early 90s was, yes, it was cartoons. Like, I was watching Looney Tunes the other day and I, I was laughing so hard. I was like, damn, cartoons ain't this good anymore. I'm telling you, they aren't that good. Man, everything, I don't know, it was just great. Uh, hell yes, Lumix FTW. Yes, absolutely. It was, it was, um, it was, it, it, that's why I, I haven't left this rig. I haven't left it. Actually, I made it a little bit smaller so it could be more maneuverable. I took off a plate and I took off a handle and I just made it nice and compact for a win. Boom. I got shoot for hours with this thing, but it's what got me my gig. So people are like, I need an FX6 and a 9. And da, 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 da. I'm like, 
you're getting it just for cloud or something. I just don't see the I don't see the value. Six grand for six grand. If I could get six K open gate right here for for eighteen hundred dollars, there's no way I'm spending six grand, and I don't get some basic things like a really good ibis. Sorry, I'm sorry, uh, and I'm gonna keep telling you all the truth about it too. <clears throat> Uh, King Kruk, 80s and early 90s, we didn't know how good we had. It. Absolutely. Hey, I'm watching, like, uh, what is it I follow? On Instagram, I follow Al Bundy uh, clips, right? It's like a profile, and it's none but married with children clips, right? And I'm just like, comedy was so good. It was so funny, and people were just, you know, you could laugh a lot more at jokes and know it's a joke, right? We know married with children was a comedic sitcom like we get it it wasn't serious it wasn't a political campaign and people could laugh uh i look at martin and brother man from the fifth flow you know bro man bro man and he was just creeping through the window you know and and i mean it was just so many great shows in the 90s that it would never air nowadays you know it's a shame anyway um, exactly. King's Krug, he he's speaking, he's speaking facts. He's speaking these facts, man. Um, cartoons, wrestling, NASCAR, sports in general, hundred percent. Everything was oh god, now I sound old. That's what it is. Now I'm sounding my age. Yep, yep, that's what's happening. Um, married with children, Martin, living color. Yes, and living color was <laughs> phenomenal and still is. I don't care. Jim Carrey was amazing the waynes brothers that was an entire family that put that show on okay so let's be honest living color was the shit it was just simply was uh i'm noticing some buffering issues and this is driving me up the wall i got you know what i need to i'm going to research how to get improve this buffer issue because i have uh fiber optic and this is just not a good promotion for fiber optic i'll tell you that right now this is looking crazy with this uh, stuttering. Uh, Tom and Jerry wouldn't fly today. Exactly. They would say it's toxic masculinity or something. I don't know. But they would say it's toxic. It's it's violent and all this stuff. It was hilarious. I thought it was. Um, we old, but only as old as we feel. 100%. I'm still 16 as far as I feel. There you go. <laughs> man, hey, I ain't mad at you. you hey, hey, you you're you can feel 16 all you want until you start hanging out with some 16-year-olds, you start realizing real quick. Uh yeah, living color was it was, man. It that was so hilarious. Inappropriate and perfect. It had all the best comedians. Tommy Lee Davidson, you had um David Allen Greer, Jim Carrey, all the Waynes brothers. It was just it was a it was a packed house of nothing but pure talent. Uh, even kids shows like Ray, Reading Rainbow were actually educational. That's right. And does anybody remember Mr. Wizard? Hello, let me say it again, <laughs> Mr. Wizard. Let me know if you know about Mr. Wizard though. Okay, that's how I learned about static electricity. Mr. Wizard was up in the house. Okay, now that was a show. Uh, morning again from the other side of the world. What's going on, man? Thank you for tuning in for jars in the house. Uh, let's say 21 because who doesn't love a cold beer? Hey, you, you ain't lying, brother. You ain't lying. Let, hold on, hold on. You ain't lying, right? Where, where'd my uh, that's right. We need our cold beers. That's right. Uh, Yes, and Jennifer Lopez. That's how she got her her start was being a fly girl, and uh, at and living color. So, shout out that show launched so many careers. That that show launched so many careers, like for real, for real. Um, oh my God, Mr. Wizard! Exactly. See, I'm taking you back. I'm taking you back, Mr. Wizard. You don't know the old school Nickelodeon with Mr. Wizard, okay? Uh, was wondering what the photo critique did I miss it? I didn't even know where to send. Oh, that's a great point. Okay, let me let me get my act right here. Okay, let me get my act right. Oh yeah, was that the film festival you were talking about earlier in Miami? Um, 
the film fest there is one in uh it's called Black American Film Festival that's happening in Miami in June. Tickets aren't cheap though. But for networking, it's going to be a lot of black creatives doing things. A a uh, HBO is a part of it and Issa Rae is the creative director. That's right. Issa Rae is the creative director this year for that festival. I paid $500 for a ticket, and that was the early bird. Hello. Okay. But sometimes you got you to gotta invest in, your, in, your, in, your, in, in these opportunities sometimes. It is what it is. Uh, Hero, Jamie Foxx. Exactly. Jamie Foxx. That's right. That's right. So, uh, but back to this question here. Uh. The photo critiques. I got a couple of photos that people sent in. Everybody, uh, let me see if I have a... Okay. Make sure you go... If anybody... Here, let me make this real quick. Uh, send photo submissions to... Info, uh, there we go. Cool. Awesome. All right, everybody. Anybody that wants to, I'm going to be doing a live critique next week. Next week, photo live critique. Send your submission of any portrait to info at robertsilverphotography.com. Don't forget it. Again, send your photos to be critiqued live on the air. So if you're too afraid of being critiqued online, I mean live, don't send them. All right. Put in the subject line, photo submission. Send me, obviously, your name, because I need to know it. Don't give me your email. Sometimes people's emails aren't their name. And your photos. If you can rename your files with your name, that would be better. Your first initial and last name, something like that. At info at robertsilverphotography.com. I'm doing a live portrait photography critique next week. I got a couple. I'd like to get more. Okay. Hey, Mark, no problem. Thank you very much, man. Take care. Thank you. And wow, maybe I'll sneak in back door of the film festival. Yeah, go ahead and sneak in, brother. They might have uh, some pretty big bruisers over there looking for cats like you. Okay, you better watch out. Uh, I'll send in mine. I want you to rip me apart so I can get better. There you go. <laughs> All right. Hey, send it in. Like I said, everybody, go ahead. Um, where the heck to go? <coughs> send me an email. Okay, that's my photography email. You can find it in the description section down below. And send me your portraits. I don't care what kind of portraits. Family portraits, wedding portraits, headshots, fashion, whatever it is. It's open. I'll get more specific as we go on. I'm going to do a photo critique once a month. You hear me? <laughs> Once a month. I'm critiquing photos live. Okay. So I already got a couple, couple submissions. I'd like to get more. More is better. Okay. I got two hours of live streaming to do. So I want to do more. Okay. And don't worry. I will be doing um website portfolio critiques as well. All right. Because folks need to improve their website game. I'll tell you that right now. I've seen a few. All right. That's some of y'all uh, theme song right there. That song right there. <laughs> All right. So we're going to be doing website critiques too. This time will be portrait photography. Any kind of portraits, send them on in. Email me. Uh, limits. Uh, no, you can do, you know, up to five. Up to five photos. Great, great question for Jar. Uh, up to five photos. Send them like by 2000, um, 2000 pixels at the, its longest. Okay. 2000 pixels at its longest so that you can easily email five photos to me. So, like two or three megabytes of photos, something like that. All right. Just benefited from my CF Express Type B. It's blazing fast. <laughs> It is, man. It's crazy how fast you don't see. That thing doesn't need the buffer. It's crazy. 100%. It's really, really good. So don't forget, everybody. Um, all right. This is about that time where I have to wind things down. Wind it down. 
And uh, but as I said, hold on, let me get on this here. All right, you already know seven o'clock is where I have to go because I have a tight schedule. I apologize, but I wake up early, good to this gym. Um, please, if you haven't already, make sure you go ahead and smash that like, that share, and you already know, subscribe and hit the bell to get notifications for my upcoming content. Got a lot coming up. Um, what else is there? Oh. Thanks for the stream, Rob. Oh, it's absolutely my pleasure. Please smash the like on the way out. And as I said earlier, make sure you go ahead and send me photo submissions, your best portraits, up to five photos. Five photos, 2,000 pixels or two to three megabyte size file at info at robertsilverphotography.com for a live critique, which I will be doing next week. That's right. Thursday, next Thursday. 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. You already know. Uh, what else is there? Also, make sure you sign up to my free newsletter. Sign up right up right in my description section down below. Because guess what? That's how you're gonna be able to be invited to my exclusive photo walk. My photo walk is happening Sunday, June 2nd, in San Francisco. And if you're signed up to my newsletter, you will gain access to the exact address and time. Okay? And all you got to do is bring positive spirits, vibes. You can be a videographer, photographer. You can have a Lumix, a Nikon, a Sony. I don't care. Fuji, your cell phone. It doesn't matter. Just come out, hang out with me and everybody else, and uh, have a good time. So, But you got to sign up to my newsletter. All right? That's a factoid right there. And you can easily do so by heading on over to robertsilverphotography.com. And click on sign up to my newsletter or find the link in the description section down below and you could you could just go right there so there you go very easy all right as i said earlier i do have my two latest videos out right now uh the lumix s5 mark ii and 2x firmware update on my opinion and then i also have the hard truth about the lumix i mean about the uh, black magic pixis 6k which I compare to the Lumix S5 Mark II X. So go ahead, check those out. Um, of course, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, let me know. Post them down below. And until next time, keep shooting and stay creative. Thank you for watching.